Uh, my name is Grant Hopcraft. I'm from the University of Glasgow and I'm a landscape ecologist. So, Grant, it's so cool to chat with you. I remember meeting you at the Serengeti Research Center a couple of years back. Um, so what have you been up to since then? I know you're involved in lots of aspects mm. of, uh, of the African Bioservices Project. Yeah. What, what's, what's new? What's up? Okay, well, um, over the last uh, three years, we've actually come a long way. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do this uh, during this African Bioservices was to collar a whole series of wildebeest and zebra. Mm. And those collars roll out. Um, mm. One of the big challenges is in, in animal movement and understanding how animals make decisions is how are they, do they react to their environment, to, to their landscape, but how does that have a physiological effect? So in other words, um, a la an animal could walk through, it, through its landscape just looking for food, but it'll stop when it's hungry. So how do you assess the physiological status of the animal in relation to its landscape? So the way we've done that is with tail hairs. And the really exciting thing is when you take a tail hair of a wildebeest or a zebra, you can backtrack like a tree ring or an ice core and establish at which point in the migratory cycle was it stressed, was it pregnant, was it starving, all this sort of stuff, and then link it back to what's actually happening on the landscape. That's really exciting. <coughs> That's fascinating. And it sounds like there uh, is a lot of potential to make all kinds of, of connections. So can you tell us again some of the factors mm. that you consider in this kind of universe mm. of data and the universe of the ecosystem? I mean, which factors are you for you the most salient? Well, the interesting thing, I think, in, a, in all of this research is that you see how animals respond to their natural landscapes. You see what stresses them out, where, where they're searching for food. But the biggest effect of, uh, that trumps pretty much everything is humans. Um, it's what actually happens at the edges of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And that's what really counts. Ecosystems can look after themselves if we give them the space. Where we're losing the battle is not in the center of the ecosystem, it's on the edges. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really come out of this. And I think that's where we need to concentrate. We need, if you ask me, I think we need a whole new strategy for how we manage the edges of ecosystems, mm -hmm. because that's, that's where we make or break. Mm -hmm.